Yes. Great. So, uh, so let's get started. Um, we'll do a, a little introduction of all of the commission members. Uh, everyone sees that Chief Judge Getty and Judge Baran are here, and and um, uh, we have uh, at least three uh, legislative services staff on the screen with us as well. My name's Ed Gillis, and I. Um, I'm a commission member and serving as the chair of this commission uh, right now. Um, Vicki, will you introduce yourself? Sure, Vicki Fretwell, uh, one of the newest members, um, my, just my second meeting and um, looking forward to working with all of you as we work through the agenda and make decisions for the judiciary. Thanks, uh, John. Uh, John Wasselison, um, I am a uh, semi-retired and an appointee of President Ferguson. We had two John, so we'll get uh, John. <laughs> Sorry, John. Hey. Hi, John. Hi, I'm John Suit. Uh, I'm, this is my second term on the commission. And look forward to it. Uh, Alice? Hi, I'm Alice Pender Hughes, and I think I'm the longest serving member on the commission from our previous chair, Bruce Kaufman. There you go. Um, and our newest member who has been appointed since we last met, uh, Carlos. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Carlos Williams, uh, physician by trade uh, here in Bethesda. And like you said, the newest member and probably the, the newest sworn in member uh, <laughs> of the commission as well. So thanks a lot. Looking forward to working with everyone. Great. Um, let me make a couple of opening remarks and then see where we are in terms of uh, the ability Mr. To Gillis, would you like me to introduce myself as well? Oh, <laughs> Megan, I'm sorry. Megan. <laughs> Not at all. Good afternoon, everyone. Megan Casey, uh, also first term on the commission. Uh, I'm an attorney in Baltimore. Um, good to be with you all. Thank you. Sorry about that, Megan. I think uh, um, I heard that Megan's law firm has uh, told everyone to work remotely for a while because of the latest COVID mess. So I think that might be at the front end of this curve. Uh -huh. Let's hope so. Yeah, let's uh, hope that it all goes away real soon. Um, so uh, our job uh, has been truncated because uh, the commission got constituted kind of a little later than usual, um, but we have kind of a, a, either a, a deadline of sorts uh, to get our recommendations uh, through the system as soon as possible. And our job really, uh, as it has been in commissions past, is to consider um, the materials that have been gathered and presented by the judiciary and by uh, legislative services and to uh, use the wisdom that we all have gained in our life experiences to uh, make recommendations about judicial salaries for the four years forward. Um, there are some things that we talked about last time and that uh, have been considered by the members of the commission between our meetings and will continue to be considered as we as we talk today. Um, but I'm going to try to summarize at least a few of them and people as uh, commission members uh, want to add or um, or add things to the list, please do. Um, uh, my notes uh, include the fact that uh, lawyers who are appointed to the bench have to give up their practices. Um, and uh, when you give up your practice, um, it's, uh, you know, it's a big step and one that uh, considers a lot, I mean, requires lots of consideration. Particularly circuit court judges have to then stand for election. And so not only have, has a circuit court judge given up his or her practice, that circuit court judge then has to stand for uh, election and a contested election and um, shortly after appointment. Other judges also stand for election, but they're on a retention basis. Um, the mission of the judiciary is uh, uh, the process uh, resulting in an appointment by the governor is to find uh, the best and the brightest to attract talent and to retain talent. And obviously as we, uh, uh, as the, the system tries to attract and retain talent um, uh, salary is one of those important elements in the consideration. 
And all of it is obviously to best serve the citizenry, citizenry of Maryland. Uh, we have been presented with information and have it uh, as part of our process of consideration, a comparison of salaries of Maryland judges and all of the levels of, uh, of our judiciary as, a, as compared to both uh, state regional judges, um, mid-Atlantic region judges, and, um, and judges on a national uh, analysis. So we have that data with us and for us to consider as well. Um, it's important for everyone to re remember that uh, the work of judges is, uh, is complex and, and often um, uh, real taxing in terms of uh, the importance of decisions that judges make. Uh, the work is serious and persons, freedoms and liberties are often at risk um, uh, uh, so that uh, we can't underestimate the importance of those, uh, those duties that judges carry out. There are real dangers as well, as, as we know, this is a, a crazy world and, and these decisions sometimes come with dangers. Um, it's also a fact that our uh, duties pursuant to the terms of the, uh, the commission's legislative uh, foundation that uh, recommendations by this commission are, are uh, instead of cost of living increases that might uh, be awarded to other state employees. I will note for everyone, and I don't know whether all of you have seen or read uh, just uh, yesterday or the day before, Governor Hogan uh, announced the negotiated pay increases for the Fraternal Order of Police and State Law Enforcement Officers, Labor Alliance and others uh, with a 7% cost of living increase this year and then 5% each of the next two years, in addition, uh, cost of living increases. So uh, we know that um, these times have resulted in some, some salary increases for other state employees. Um, so those are my kind of initial comments and it's time for us to have a discussion. I'd love to start the discussion with the motion and I'll recognize Ms. Pinderhughes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first of all, I just want to add a couple things to what you said about why it's my position that our judges deserve a raise. Number one, although our judges have not had problems with security, we know what judges are facing in other jurisdictions. Number two, as a result of COVID, the criminal law docket has been really backed up and our judges are really working overtime. And with respect to family law, there are a lot of issues in terms of visitation, et cetera where our judges have been forced to work around the clock on an emergency basis. So it goes without saying that our judges are entitled to a raise. I move that our judges receive a raise of $10,000 for four years, $10,000 the first year, $10,000 the second year, $10,000 the third year, and $10,000 the fourth year. In conjunction with my motion, I did have a question in terms of the comment from legislative reference in terms of the administrative judge's stipend. It was my understanding from reading that that, that should be tacked on to this motion. However, um, having experience as a parliamentarian, I'm not sure that's a correct ruling because it's my understanding that stipend has to be approved by a bill. Is that correct? Well, let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, you've made a motion. Let's bifurcate that second issue and okay. deal with it separately. Okay. Um, so I have, I'll just leave that the first motion. All right. So the motion to uh, recommend salary increases for each of the next four years, each year in the amount of $10,000. Is there a second? I'll second I'll it. Second. All right, there's a second by Mr. Wasilisson, uh, Mr. Suit, and Ms. Casey also, uh, uh, and Ms. Fretwell. So lots of seconds here. And um, Dr. Williams, and Dr. Williams. And Dr. Williams as well. So I uh, thank you all for that motion and second. Now that we have a motion on the floor, is there discussion about uh, the recommendation, uh, the motion made by Ms. Pinder Hughes? I'd like to offer a few uh, remarks, if I may, Chair Gillis. I, I, I think I agree completely with the, the recommendation that Ms. Pinder Hughes um, uh, moved. And there are a couple of additional points I think might be helpful to ground the discussion. One is that 
uh, in 2017, when this commission made a recommendation, the recommendation was for a $35,000 increase for each level of judge across a four year time period. And if you look at that as a percentage of the judge's salaries, that percentage ranged at the time from about an 18% increase for the chief judge of the Court of Appeals to about a 24.7% increase for an associate judge of the district court and a $40,000 increase, which Ms. Pinder, who's just moved for this uh, year over the next four years would be a similar percentage increase, about 18% for the, uh, for the chief of the Court of Appeals and about 24.7% for an associate judge of the district court. So this is consistent with what this commission did four years ago. Um, I would also add that I found the, the information that the judiciary provided regarding the cost of living factor um, that uh, was used to adjust the uh, salaries of our judges in comparison to those in our region, I found that very compelling. And if we were to uh, increase and the General Assembly were to approve a $40,000 increase over four years, that would move Maryland from the bottom of the pack in our region in, with the cost of living factor included to about the middle of the pack, which I think is much more equitable. Uh, again, as Ms. Pinderhue said, and Mr. Gillis too, given all the work that our judges, our judges do. Uh, so with, with those remarks, I, I yield. I, I, I'd like to make a statement as well with that. I, I, I think it's important to recognize, so even though we talk about a four year period of time, really and truly it's yearly that you look at cost of living. And if we make a $40,000 increase in salaries, um, we're saying basically each year, um, we, I think the point I'm making is that we have to take it from year to year and not just, just from a overall four year period of time. Because my understanding, if we make a $40,000 ruling uh, and, it's, and that recommendation is taken up, um, that does not afford them the ability to get cost of living increase that they normally would get on top of that. And so whatever we decide is what they get, period. And so for the first year, uh, we're actually talking about a $10,000 increase, and that's only going to be about 3 or 4% from the highest judge's um, <laughs> salary. So uh, that's it. So really, truly, what we're giving them the first year is cost of living, if at, at best. The second year, same thing. So it's not uncommon for some jobs, such as my own and others, to say, we're going to give you a 3% increase on average a year. Well, I think we have to be clear that that's basically what we're doing here. So it's not a, a huge uh, increase in salary. Uh, it's really and truly putting them uh, on par with what it would be cost of living. And right now, inflation is soaring. Uh, so I think $4,000, I mean, $10,000 a year uh, is reasonable. Uh, I wish it could be more, uh, but I do think we have to temper that with what the assembly will accept. Um, but I, I want to be clear, though, I don't think that it's an absorbent amount of money at all. Uh, when you take into the grand scheme of things, considering that they don't get a cost of living increase. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Um, other comments? I don't see any other hands. Uh, it's time to vote on uh, the motion to raise, to recommend raising judicial salaries across the board uh, each of the next four years in the amount of $10,000 each year. All in favor, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's unanimous. Um, all right, uh, Ms. Pinderhughes raised another question regarding um, uh, stipends or for administrative judges. Um, I'll make one comment and see if there is a uh, desire to uh, consider that or to go forward in another direction. In light of the fact that, that it seems to me from the conversation we had last time and, and the materials that we reviewed that um, having an administrative stipend for, having a stipend for administrative positions in the circuit court and district court would require legislative relief. And I'm leery about um, conflating that the motion that was just passed uh, with a $10,000 raise for each of the next four years uh, with uh, consideration of, of creating a new step in the process. Uh, I'm, I'm not certain that I know that there would be a problem with that, but I sure wouldn't want to risk having uh, the assembly um, see that there's a clear request uh, or a recommendation from this commission about 
salaries for um, the next four years. And it might be that during an off year, in the next year or two, that uh, the judiciary's uh, legislative team could uh, work on making changes to the law so that when this commission meets again in four years, there would be clarity about uh, there being another step in this analysis of chief judge of the Court of Appeals, judges of the Court of Appeals, chief judge of the, of the Court of Special Appeals, and so on. Um, and I would think that that would make uh, both the job of the commission and the job of the legislature easy and, and easier in considering these things. Um, so that's, that's my thought or comment on the process. Um, Mr. Chair, this is Alice Pudis, and I agree with that because, um, as I said, I'm the chair of Affordable Housing Trust, and I remember one year we tried to bring two things in, and the legislature just went crazy, and Judge Getty will remember Senator Leventon and Senator Blount, and I remember them saying, sometimes it's not good to go before us and ask for too much when you get greedy, to use a quote, you can get hurt. So I would move that we consider in an off year providing a stipend meet again in an off year and consider a stipend for the judges of the circuit and district court. Um, so question. Okay. Yes, please. Um, by off year, I, I felt like I heard you say it would wait until our next cycle, which would be four years. Yes. I wanna suggest, that um, as compelling as the story we heard about the administrative judges were, that maybe that could be committed into a report itself, that we could take your suggestion and have the judiciary's legislative team, perhaps along with the, our own um, Department of Legislative Services, look at what language would have to be put together. And perhaps it's something we could revisit a year or two years from now, as opposed to wait the entire four year period of time. And you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna amend my motion because I just said an off year didn't put a year. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you think it would be wise to say in one year or two years? Because I can put that in the motion. Let me try it. Let me try to address this. I think that this commission only has authority to act every four years. So there would be, oh, yeah. um, there would be an issue about that. But I think that the, the issue itself can be discussed by um, the judiciary and the legislature to try to uh, create a new step in the judicial salary schedule so that in four years when the commission meets again, or if the legislature wants to uh, pass legislation to allow the commission to meet sooner, uh, both of those things could happen. Uh, Ms. Botts. Mm -hmm. Yes, there has been in the past, um, Ms. Pinder Hughes and Mr. Gillis would remember back in 2008, we were already supposed to be under the four year cycle, but because of varying considerations, we ended up meeting in 2008, then again in 2009, and then again in 2011. And that was, that was done via separate legislation, which we could, um, you know, which someone could request, but it has, uh, you know, I can't promise that it would happen, but it has happened before is, is what I can. Okay, so, so perhaps Ms. Pinder Hughes uh, comments can be uh, turned into a motion that in the report that legislative services will make for us, uh, mm -hmm. that there is this, there's been this discussion about uh, these elements relating to administrative judge stipends or extra compensation and how it could be addressed going forward. <clears throat> Jen, uh, this, this is John. Is there? I saw some email traffic late this afternoon. Is there clarity as to our our um, jurisdiction over the administrative um, judges as far as salary setting, or would that require separate legislation to put it in our jurisdiction? Based on the preliminary advice that we received from the Attorney General's Office, who's the counsel to the General Assembly. She thought it was within our purview to do this and that there would, it, I mean, the legislation itself to do it seemed honestly relatively simple to do. And based on that information, it was 
it was kind of a, a, a dual process. There would have to be some reference in the joint resolution as well as statutory changes that would need to be made. So I'll circle back to the question and what if we say within the next two years? That gives plenty of- Right, because, because Jen is right. And I remember that we did meet. I forgot mm -hmm. why, but we met, I remember coming to Annapolis. Yeah. 2008, 2000, I forgot what it was about, but I remember the drive now. So- um, <laughs> So um, Ms. Fretwell, is your comment that you want the, uh, the material is going to be prepared by legislative services to recommend that we meet again in two years? No, I think her comment, Mr. Chair, is that in my motion, I put in two years and two years after um, we have a report that we're requesting that legislative reference get material to us and that in two years we would need to consider where we go. I said, I didn't put a time frame, and Ms. Fredwell, I think, was saying, let's put a time frame. So two years from now, if I'm right, everyone is 2023. Is that right? Everybody's shaking your head. I guess that means yes. <laughs> I move that we meet in 2023 after and have a report from legislative reference and our competent assistant attorney general that we're all in line and how we proceed in terms of this. Point of reference with that, uh, just a point of reference. What authorities will we have when we meet at that time? So we want to clarify what authorities we have at the moment when we meet. Yeah, um, let's, uh, uh, before we seek a second, I think Ms. Box wanted to speak again, but thank you, Dr. Williams. I was going to say something sort of along the lines of what Dr. Williams said. We may just want to be clear that maybe the motion is that we request or pursue um, avenues to meet separately, but we can't, you know, we can't give ourselves the authority to meet. Okay. Years, so so I move that we make a recommendation. Do, okay. I move that we okay. pursue avenues to meet in two years to consider okay. the stipend for the circuit and district court judges. All right. Is there a second to that motion? Can I ask a question? I'm sorry, before we proceed. It, yes. Is, is your thinking, Ms. Penderhues, that at that time in two, two years from now that we would have a discussion about whether to make a recommendation that the legislature adopt statutory change that would allow for an intermediate step in the judicial salary schedule? Yes. Okay. And in reference to what Jen said, I, I don't remember why, but we had meetings with judges. I don't remember what we were trying to do, but when we were meeting, we were trying to do something where we were meeting, trying to get raises or something. So we have done that before. Legislative reference came in and there were all these reports. Let's try to keep this in a little bit of order. I'm gonna uh, ask Ms. Box to hold on for a second. There's a motion to, there's a motion to uh, include in our report uh, that the commission would like to meet again in two years to discuss opportunities for uh, administrative judge stipends. Um, and Is that all though, sir? Hey, Chairman, is that the only thing that we're requesting in two years, or we want the ability to have uh, more conversation around other topics? That's what I thought I heard. I don't well, know. You change the uh, our once every four year recommendation. Yeah. So let's see if there's a second to that motion to include in the report uh, request that the commission meet again in two years to discuss. Um, administrative judge stipends. And I suppose that means that in between now and then there would be discussion either with the legislature or the um, the assistant attorney general about whether or not even there's authority to do that. And Ms. Botts, you were gonna say something. I don't see a second yet. So let's see if we can get some clarity. Oh, my clarity, I was just going to respond to Ms. Pender Hughes, who was wondering why we were meeting so much. It was because of that, the economic climate back in 2000. Okay, okay. That, that's why we, they were doing so many off-cycle meetings. Thank you, Ms. Butts. I was having sure. a senior, <laughs> senior okay. Dr. Williams. And, and so along with what Ms. Boss just said, and I think because of the economic climate we're in now with inflation soaring, 
uh, it would be reasonable for us to meet in two years again. I just want to make sure we don't pigeonhole ourselves in two years to only discuss that issue if we need to discuss other issues considering the economic climate. Okay, and so, so. I, so my point is, I don't know if we want to broaden the conversation to, to beyond uh, just the stipend issue. Do we want to broaden it to other things as well? Okay, so the commission's authority now is to meet once every four years and to recommend salary increases for those four years. We don't have authority to come back in two years and reconsider it unless the legislature gives us that power. Um, um, so I'm not certain that, you know, the only thing we can do now is to include in our report uh, that we uh, hope that the legislature will consider a way to, between now and the next commission, uh, to uh, have another step in the legis in the judicial salary scale for uh, administrative judges in the circuit court and district court. Mr. Wasilis. Would it be possible then is, is to try and get us set up for in the next four year cycle to be able to have purview and authority over the administrative law judges to make a recommendation at that time instead of trying to do it in two years in the middle of this time. I mean, um, is that is that a viable thing or is people feel that's too long to wait for this issue? Yeah, um, that's a good comment, uh, Ms. Fretwell. So I would suggest that it's too long to address this issue and we'd like to do it sooner if we possibly could. And then reflecting on what was shared earlier about bringing two things to the table at once, four years from now we'll be discussing increases to the judiciary to bring a new piece to the table might you know, uh, be too dynamic for <laughs> us to get it through. And we might want to have this behind us. And then um, to the other question, I think the other area, which we are not discussing today that has not come up as far as I know is any discussion around the pension plan. Cause that is also um, within our jurisdiction. So if somebody thought maybe we wanted to do that in two years, I guess we could, but I'm not suggesting that. I think that I'd like to go to the point of two years from now, we, that we try to get permission to uh, get back together two years from now for the purpose of exploring and taking, uh, possibly taking action on uh, the administrative judge. Okay, so just to clarify again, I, and I will restate that motion and, and seek a second, because I think it parallels Ms. Pindu's uh, motion as well. Um, but the idea would be between now and two years from now that there be legislative action that creates that extra step in the judge's pay scale. Is that the point? I don't know whether that's for us to do or the judiciary brings legislative action to the table. Someone's going to have to help us with that. Yeah, so I, my, the point would be that, that we would in our uh, recommendations include a, a statement that we think that there should be legislative uh, a change to create this additional step. And then wherever it falls is wherever it falls. It was my understanding that there would be, the judiciary would make a motion or somebody judge get to uh, put in legislation to have that put in yeah. as law. Yeah, so I, okay. I think and then in two years, as Ms. Fretwell has said, that we would come and discuss it. But I wanna bring a point of order, just put my parliamentary. We need a second. We have a motion on the floor. We're having discussion. That's, so that's right under up. Robert's rules, I just, I am a parliamentary. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm with you. I, th I think that uh, I said I was gonna restate the motion. I think the motion is that we ask legislative services to include in our report uh, that they're, uh, be um, a statement that we encourage the legislature to add a step to the judiciary's pay scale and that we'd like to, as a commission, have authority to meet again in two years after that legislation is incorporated. Is that a fair summary? Uh, Jen, I like Jen because I don't like uh, have the authority because I'm going back to, um, practice you know, under Robert's rules. We didn't, I don't know that we had authority when we were meeting every year where it was written. I don't like that term, have authority. So going back to what Jen said, how we met 2008, nine and 10, 
I don't think we need to put have authority in a, a motion. Jen? I just wanted to, whatever, you know, the commission decides strategically is the best way to pursue this is obviously up for you all. I just want to make sure it's clear that, you know, the attorney general did see that the authority was already there for the commission to add the stipend and separate legislation. It almost could be considered like a technical, technical legislation that need to go along with that change. So if you feel like just asking for the 10,000 per year is what you want to do and you want to study the, you know, the issue about it some more, that's absolutely appropriate and you know, up for the members to decide. But I just didn't want you to think that you had to wait for two years before you tried to, uh, you know, address the stipend because of the separate legislation. That's, there's always some technical legislation sometimes that has to come along with, with other matters. It was almost like corresponding housekeeping to make sure that things are aligned. So I guess I'll ask. Go ahead. I guess I'll ask Ms. Pinderhughes to restate her motion so we can see if there's a second. Okay, and I guess, Mr. Chair, that was my question, which Jen has just clarified that I wasn't. So we do have the authority you're saying based on the Attorney General, correct? Again, and just to be clear, we asked specifically about us about instituting a stipend. And right. Speaking, it, it you know the money's still going to be the same if you're getting a two thousand dollars stipend versus you know a two thousand dollars salary. It's still two thousand dollars extra, but we're not specifically creating a separate level of court. It's just being put in as a as a stipend, um, just because that's the way the judiciary referenced. So that's the way we asked the question. Um, so in other words, we're not creating like there's an administrative head of the district court. We're not creating a separate salary level per se for the administrative, the county administrative judges or the administrative mm -hmm. judges of the district court. It's just those people who are designated. I think designated was sort of the key. It's a designation, designation, not a particular office. Correct. So it's a designation for a stipend under those jobs. Is that right? Right. Uh, the administrative law judges, it, the, it's a designation. Of an of a judge as an administrative law judge. Does this commission recommend the salaries of administrative law judges? Well, this isn't administrative law judges, Mr. Wassell. Listen, that's a term of art that is an administrative uh, executive branch position. We're talking about judges of the circuit court or of the district court who serve kind of like uh, administrative duties, overseeing the case assignments or. Uh, deciding um, matters inside the courthouse. So these are positions that are within our purview now with the judges. Yes. Correct. Administrative law judges are under the Office of Administrative Hearings, not the judiciary. Can it be as simple as to request the beat within the next two years to further explore the request of the judiciary to create a stipend for the administrative? I think that's clear. I'll second that motion. <laughs> All right. Is there any discussion on Ms. Fretwell's motion? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think I'm out of line here. The question I had was, I don't disagree with what Ms. Penny Hughes is saying in terms of your motion, first of all. I was just asking earlier, uh, is there any value in making it more inclusive? So basically to say, recommend to meet in two years uh, due to the current economic climate to reevaluate stipends, pension plan, um, and uh, salaries. Uh, and so all I was wondering was, would it be reasonable to expand what our scope would be in two years, opposed to just pigeonholing ourselves into one topic? We don't have any authority to expand our scope, I don't think. Well, that's why it's a recommendation and not a, we don't. That's why we're recommending that we be given the ability to meet in two years to discuss these topics. So, so Dr. Gonna Williams, I'm gonna go back to my other comment about why I didn't think we should make the motion. We could have made the motion today with our motion. I mean, I could have made a second motion that we go forward today, putting too many things in front of the legislature at once if we just were making raises. And if we consider this now in four years, we'll be considering raises again. And that's why I thought it was politically very savvy of us not to put too many motions for action in this legislation. And so making an increase in salary of 40,000 over the next four years, I think was absolutely appropriate. And that's the only thing that should go forward this year in terms of money. 
But we're asking to meet in two years. And the question is, we still have on the table to discuss pensions. We still have on the table to discuss stipends. And so the question was, should we put that in one recommendation and say, are we given the ability to meet in two years to discuss these two things? That, that was the only question I had uh, to amend the, uh, the amendment, to basically to modify the amendment. Uh, should it be an addition of the other issues that we need to discuss? Or should we wait four more years to have that conversation? Over. Any, any further comment? Well, point of order, there's a motion on the floor that Ms. Fretwell, Fretwell made and I could second. So right. I think you have to vote that. Mo that well, I'm not uh, amending our motion. So. No, no, no. Oh, so okay. the, the question I have is there is any more comment discussion on the motion by Ms. Fretwell and the second by Ms. Pinder Hughes? Yes, um, Mr. Ms. Chair. Casey. Uh, I think in response to what uh, Dr. Williams was just saying, I, I take the point of not wanting to pigeonhole ourselves, but I, to my mind, I think the only live issue we have that's been raised by the judiciary uh, that, that has not been decided today is the issue of adding a stipend or an increase to salary for administrative judges. And so I think we, there hasn't been any question about or discussion about pensions or any need to revisit the issue of pensions. And so I think it would be better to to focus on the thing that we know is, is the issue we want to come back to. Um, I, I would just, um, I, I don't disagree with the motion either. I think it's a good idea, but I do just want to raise the possibility. Should we consider coming back within one year or is that, is that too quick um, to, to meet again? It, it, it just, I do, um, you know, for other reasons everyone's already said, I think politically it makes sense to have what move forward on just one issue today for action, but two years, even two years, may be longer than we would like to wait to take this second step. I would accept. And Ms. Casey, I just want to add something for Dr. Williams. One thing when we met was it used to be, and Judge Getty wasn't a judge then, if you were a judge and you died and you weren't married, your, you know, the money would not go to, it had to go to your spouse. And I remember there was some legislation or consideration we did years ago about that. That was a big issue. So I think two years though, to give time. What do you think, Ms. Fretwell? I was gonna say, I would be happy to accept one year in light of the fact that we clarified the situation with regard to the legislation itself. We don't have to have that in place and it is a housekeeping issue for us. A year gives us sufficient time to have DLS put, pull together material from the judiciary that augments the um, verbal testimony that we got when we were together the last time and gives us some additional facts that might relate to um, other jurisdictions and what they're doing for our administrative judge type that would give us background enough and we could meet a year from now. I'd be comfortable with that. I'll second that amendment. Okay, so now there's um, an amended motion that has been seconded, seconded. Uh, to include in the report a recommendation that uh, this commission meets again in one year to discuss um, stipends or additional compensation for judges who carry out administrative obligations in either the circuit court or the district court. Um, and Ms. Fretwell, I apologize if I'm um, not recalling whether or not you also included pension in that. I did not. Okay, so the motion is to include in the report, as I just said, in uh, the opportunity for this commission to come back and join you. Further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hands. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, nine. that's unanimous. Um, is there any? I, I, I assume then, it was, as was part of our first action for recommendation, then we are purposely silent on any pension changes. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any other, I think now that we've made these motions and uh, the commission has uh, favorably voted on both of them, our work is done other than to see the report that legislative services is going to prepare. Um, are there any other next steps, Ms. Botts? Um, Chair Gillis, just speaking of the report, just to sort of let you know how that will work, it's 
probably going to take a few weeks on our end to prepare the report. And that's only because there's some specific information that we have to get, even though we're not addressing pensions per se, the salary increases will have an impact <laughs> on the system. And that information is, we get, um, is, is outsourced. So we can't do that part in house. It typically takes several weeks. So I think with the time that we're looking at now, what we would probably do is prepare the report and then send you, um, Mr. Chair, a draft of it. It's it's typically just updated information from year to year. There's not a whole lot of um, right. changes to it. So we could just send that to you for, um, for your approval. Okay. All right. Anything else for uh, the commission to consider today? See nothing. Uh, I want to again thank um, uh, these commission members for your good work and for your diligence in taking care of things in um, in quite a compressed time. I think that good work. I want to thank Chief Judge Getty and Judge Baran for being available <laughs> to discuss matters. Um, and we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Have a nice holiday. Everybody. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you, everyone.